Welcome to Read Your Comics. Today I am looking at Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, starring Adam Starr and the Solar Legion. All right, here's a newer book, sort of. This particular thing came out in September of 2023. I don't do a lot of modern comics on here. This is kind of an exception. It's newer, but it's older at the same time. Um, as the title says, it's it's a Jack Kirby book, Star Warriors, starring Adam Starr and the Solar Legion. And down here we got Tom Scioli. Um, he's kind of the master Kirby ambassador, I guess you would say, of this era, of this generation. He does have the graphic novel, Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, um, also as a follow-up. I am Stan. Go get these. These are great books. Um, but he did this one first. He kind of had a reputation of being a, uh, I don't want to say Kirby clone. He was part of what I guess the Jack Kirby collector refers to as Kirby as a genre. His work is heavily inspired by um, Kirby layouts, Kirby character designs and such. Um, but it, you could tell it's Shioli versus Kirby. So he's not exactly trying to clone Kirby. He tries to capture some of that. Uh, dynamic layout sensibilities of, of Kirby. This, however, is kind of, it is Kirby. It, it's Kirby and remastered and kind of remixed by Scioli. So what this is, is some of Kirby's earliest work as a cartoonist. This is before he even teamed up with Joe Simon to make Captain America. Um, this stuff is in public domain. Apparently it's been reprinted a few times. I, I don't know. It was in a short-lived comic series called Crash Comics, um, and issues one through three, um, comics back then were more or less anthologies. They would be kind of triple sized by today's standard of comics and would have multiple stories. Sometimes they'd only be anywhere from a page to eight pages long. And so Jack Kirby did this story called Solar Legion with Adam Starr in it. So Kirby contributed to one of those comics called Crash Comics. And this was the property he came up with. And in this, you're going to see a lot of like pulp sci-fi action, definitely of its time. I see a little bit of early Fantastic Four in this. I see early Sky Masters. Um, things that Kirby would eventually come back to or flesh out into like a bigger, bigger, better ideas. There are roots of that in this book. Now, what Scioli did, so he says by Jack Kirby, remixed by Tom Scioli. So Kirby wrote and drew this. The difference is, the difference is he, he laid it out in definitely smaller panels. Scioli would take some of those panels, blow them up, kind of strip away some of the noise around them. Uh, they were in full color. And so he, again, takes it just down to the Kirby essentials. We're going to see some spot coloring of red. Uh, I like the pages have this slight yellow tint to them. Um, it, it's not trying to exactly get age out of it. It's just kind of the color he's using for the background of the page. Very Star Wars-ish here, which you're going to see some of that in this. I mean, this has like the, the Flash Gordon stuff that would ins be an inspiration to George Lucas. That stuff is in this as well. I like this cockpit right here all these levers and stuff. Um, so we, we meet Adam Starr, who's part of more or less a intergalactic or at least a solar system wide police force. So there's some military, there's like military aspects that we see here. And right here, this looks like prototype Reed Richards to me. I mean, this is kind of how Reed Richards is drawn in FF number one. Um, you got this guy with this dastardly beard, <laughs> like an ape like character here. And he's pointing some death ray, like a death star at a planet. Well, or a ship, I guess. And it blows up a ship. So this is the stuff that would have been small panels that she always blown up to make whole pages out of. And he did it in a way that like, I guess, I guess he probably like digitally kind of traced over what Kirby did. So he's keeping the Kirby stuff, trying to get the lines exactly the same. Um, and not getting in the way or trying to add too much of his own stuff. He, he did re-letter it and took away, he took away a lot of the like narration box shapes and stuff that would be like pasted up. So it really, I mean, I, I love like this, you really get like a sense of the detail of what Kirby was trying to do 
probably with these pencil lines here is kind of what uh, Scioli's trying to have come through. And this is where the spot coloring works great. This is just, it adds just enough depth going through. I'm like a visor there. So it's a, kind of a typical science fiction story of the time. You've got a heroic space police guy. He's going to other planets. He's liberating planets. So here he goes to blow up that death ray <laughs> thing that they were shooting up. I mean, this is even this canyon and stuff. At first glance, if you don't let your eyes focus on it, it just looks like kind of a mess on the page. But when you really look at the detail of the rocks and these like spires coming up, it's pretty impressive. Again, this is a young, young, young Jack Kirby before Captain America. Futuristic looking city with these like in domed walkways that are elevated up above the city. Airplanes are still pretty much, you know, 19... 20s and 30s kind of style of airplanes. Um, maybe a little futuristic on the backside right there. You've got a rocket ship that rocket ships tended to look more airplane like because they weren't shooting rockets up into space at this time. They didn't really know what they were doing. Another great use of just the red coloring on both of these pages, I think are great. It just makes the shadow pop a little bit more. I do like the word balloon style around it. Um, almost, I mean, it's truly balloonish or cloud-like, giving it a nice whimsical feel. So we see our Adam Star character coming in to take out the bad guys here. The oncoming juggernaut of death. <laughs> The story reads super quick. So that was ba that was essentially what would have been on issue one. The blast that follows rocks the very foundations of Pluto. So they're, they were on Pluto of all places. <laughs> and that just kind of shows you like what was captivating the mind of Kirby and, and young people of the 1930s as it was. They had no concept of what Pluto was. They just, another planet more or less recently discovered the idea of life being on it or being able to sustain life was just, it was very real to them. So this would be the second issue. We got solar Legion. Look at that lettering. I'm pretty sure that's Kirby lettering from the original. I like the kind of the blast around it again, great spot coloring. And really even this uh, like pencil color has a little bit of a magenta in it. So it's, it's not, just gray or black. I mean, that face there, that's less Reed Richards looking than that first face. Still working on consistency there. And again, like these two panels would have been on the page like this, like small, because this is all blown up to, to fill out a full issue. I like this monster. I like these aliens. Look at these aliens. It's like lizard faced aliens. Great work on their like bubbly eyes. Nice sea monster. Simplistic in the gun lines here. Probably again because this is a blown up panel. I mean, they just look like spears. Big blown up panel here too. This was probably just a quarter panel. They didn't do splash pages back then. It took up too much real estate. There's Arthex, hidden air base. We've found it. Simple design on the astronaut suits too. I mean, they don't need much. They just need like... A plain suit with a backpack that would be like your oxygen thing. Gun stuff is a little simple snacks, but this would be kind of a rough sketch, I think, by today. Like, even here, you can see the details that I guess Scioli did this kind of, but it looks like, I mean, it looks like just taking a pencil and filling it in. Looks good. Another great worm monster. This one has like some hair on it and stuff. Um, this is where I think, yeah, the Adam Star character was captured. And the villain decides just leave him there for the monster to eat. I mean, that's right out of episode two <laughs> of uh, Attack of the Clones when they're like tied to the thing and they let the monsters come out and eat them. Typical sci-fi trope or just super villain trope even as, as the medium moves forward. 
and then a heat beam suddenly stabs across Adam's vision, blasting the monstrous worm to bits. Here comes the heat beam. Great, great face of defiance right there, too. So here's our heat beam that was blowing up the... Now it's blowing up a mountain. And they rescue Adam. Uh, I mean, there's it's simplistic. This is really a book, if you're a Kirby fan and you want to examine um, his really early beginning roots of his art style. There's things in here I see that he develops as he becomes what we know, especially in the Silver Age. Um, you still see some like early of his Golden Age stuff, more elongated figures. There's the blockiness that you think of in later Kirby. It's not there yet. Um, he's got a ways to go as he refines that that style and probably shortcuts that he, he learned to do over time. But you see in the monster design, this like gun design, the ship design, the roots are there. You see what he was interested in. Playing with the lettering every time, too. Solar Legion. So this time, our character is going to have to go rescue a damsel in distress. And we get a new alien sidekick here with these big massive ears. We saw him on the cover right there. Get a better view of him there with those massive ears. <laughs> I mean, again, that's character design, creature design. The beginnings are here. Um, you got these canals with like a little submarine. This is what I wanted to get to is this fish monster. So now we've had a lizard dragon thing that came out of the water. We've had that like hairy worm thing. We've got a couple of good alien designs. And now we get this like giant fish monster thing. I mean, look at this panel. And again, this would have been small. This would have been like this on the page. So I think she only did a great thing by blowing these up and really getting to examine the organicness of the artwork, the curvatures of the lines and stuff. Just even the details here of the shading. So he pretty much just escapes that thing, <laughs> arrives in the, the villainous lair. And look at the outfits he's wearing in this are very um, pilot-like of the time period. People couldn't get out of their heads of that stuff just yet. <laughs> he rescues the girl. Again, we get the, another, or it's the same monster, maybe. It'd be interesting to see the coloring of this right here. It's like, is the girl wearing kind of like a bikini? It looks like she's got a midriff there and like she's just wearing like bikini bottoms there <laughs> for her space suit. <laughs> Not a lot of color on this page, just, just spot coloring on this one. Some pages have a lot like this one. This one has none. The end. This has uh, kind of the trope of the hero saves the woman. And she's like, you've got some thanks coming too, Mr. Star. <laughs> Implying that she's going to, uh, you know, hook up with him, I guess, to say thank you. It's such a male fantasy always to... I rescued the woman, now she must give herself to me. <laughs> I rescued her from the bad guy who was trying to take her, and because I rescued her, she will now give herself to me. <laughs> Anyhow, this design on this Solar Legion base. Striking from a hidden base on Jupiter's moon. Here's our villains that we've taken out. The Worm Thing, <laughs> that's the simple name for it. That big fish monster. Great Gansha. Beware pirates and space monsters. You don't want to end up on Adam Starr's list. And this would have been more like the layout of what it looked like. This is a different story. Cyclone Burke by Jack Kirby. So this isn't Solar Legion, but this is how this is how this whole book would have appeared. All of this would have appeared more in this kind of a layout. Because, I mean, this is a whole story in two pages. And it has some of the same tropes, except this is just more earthbound planes. Uh, Sioli did do the remix here. I like this panel a lot. That one will be good blown up. Cool looking robot here. I like that he switched it from the red to the blue tone for this. And 
that's pretty much it. I like that. Now that's a Scioli drawing of Kirby, age 22 when he did this. This did have kind of a high cover price, 10 bucks for a brand new book. Um, I think it's worth it for any Kirby collector to have for sure. Um, Scioli, if you're into uh, cartoonist Cave Habe, he's you know, kind of like in a part of that. One to be on the lookout for. If, if your comic shop probably doesn't have this anymore since it did come out you know, about six months ago at this point, I doubt it's on reorder or if it is, there's probably not many copies left. Um, but if you see it out there, I would grab it because I doubt this will be something that's reprinted much. And if you are a Kirby collector, it is a must have. I think that's it. That's all I got until next time. Read your comics. <laughs>